I thought I would share with you my progress on the wheels. Uh, these are the back wheels I made. I'm <coughs> the ones I made prior are I'm using for the front wheels. These back ones measure five inches, and I had to make them from scratch because I didn't have any spellbinder dies for them. And uh, they came out pretty good, I think. I did them the same process as I did the front ones. And I think what I'm going to do is get some molding paste and fill in these these uh, little gaps in between so it will be smooth in there. I may or may not. I'm still contemplating that. But this is the back wheel assembly that I've made. And it's cons it consists of chipboard that is a sixteenth of an inch thick. And I think it was five eighths wide. See. Yeah, five eighths wide, five eighths of an inch wide, and four and a half long for the top and bottom sections. And I glued three for the top and three for the bottom. But before I glued the top ones together, I marked holes. Uh, you can probably see them there. They're easier to see on the bottom, maybe. If you can see in there. And th that's what. Uh, we'll attach this wheel section to the bottom of our our uh, hearfs with brads. I'll glue it along there and then use the brads too to, to secure it up onto the, the underneath side of our hearfs. But uh, these pieces here, there's three here and three here and they're four and a half by, by five eighths and I glued them together, glued those together and then, then these side pieces are an inch wide by five eighths, and I glued three together there and three together there, and I uh, punched a hole three quarters of an inch down or a quarter of an inch up, whichever way you go, for the axle, depending on whatever size your axle is. I didn't have a hole punch big enough, so I used um, I used the eyelet setter thing that, that punched holes and punched a direct hole and then uh, shift away at it a little bit around to make the hole bigger. But uh, if you have one, you know, the size slightly larger than your axle, then you're good. But these uh, go on the outside. The side ones go inside. You know, they don't go out here on the ends. They go on the inside. And then once I got the assembly uh, together, I used some of the Tyvek, um, you know, from the priority envelope type, or the, um, the mailing envelopes that don't tear. I just used a continuous strip and, and uh, pasted it around just to give it a little strength. This will all be painted and everything later. And then I slipped my dowel rod through there and cut it a little bit longer than what my four and a half inch uh, axle assembly is. You gotta keep in mind how wide your hearse is that you're making. So this has got to your wheels need to move freely once it's on your hearse. And you also have to take into consideration where you want your your wheels to fall. You know how wide you want this part determines how far down your axle hangs underneath your hearse hope I'm making sense. But anyway, I just used a ladybug. I, I took some of the Tyvek strips and went around the end of the the dowel rod just as a stop so it wouldn't pull completely through the um, the axle assembly. And then I took a I, this is actually a ladybug thumbtack because I didn't have any of the ones I wanted, just the flat ones. But this is in here temporarily. Just to, it's just pushed into the end of the. Let's see if I can take it out to show you. See, it's just stuck through there. Uh, hopefully, you can see the end of it, and it just sticks through the end of the axle there, and that's. I'll, I, whenever I get the correct thumbtacks, I will glue, put glue here on the the end of the dowel rod and everything before I 
permanently adhere the the wheel on. They're kind of wobbly looking right now because you know they're not glued permanently on there. But this, uh, I wanted it to turn, so this is what I've come up with to make the wheels turn. And uh, for the front, it'll have to be a little different because these wheels are smaller and the axle will have to drop down lower. Plus, I'm thinking I'm going to make it to where the front wheels will turn. Uh, and not with these, you know, they'll, they'll turn separately. So we'll see how that goes. But anyway, I just wanted to share with you what I'm up to right now. This is, um, this is the back wheels. If you have any questions, be sure and ask. Uh, I know I probably can't, aren't covering everything here in the video, so if you have questions, just ask. And I'll update you again. Meow yeah, people, it's Myra. I started work on a project that's been in my head for a while. I want to do a, a horse-drawn hearse. And I was started on my project, then I, I stopped and thought, well, y'all might like to make one too, so I thought I'd do a, a progressive tutorial, you know, kind of like I did on the apothecary case. but. Uh, Sorry if I sound out of it. I've been recovering from pneumonia, so please forgive any lackluster or brain dead moments. Um, but I've already started. I've got my floor, the bottom, and the two inside sides. This is what the 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 uh, I guess what I, I don't even know what it's called, but it's the part where the the coffin sits and I made it to size my coffins that I got at Michael's for 99 cents and I wanted plenty of room so that it could go in and also have maybe some flowers in there with it too maybe potted flowers at each end or maybe just one end or something but I wanted plenty of room you know I didn't want it so tight that I couldn't get it you know it'd be difficult to get it in there especially if I decorated the coffin in any way. I didn't want that to be obscured. And uh, so that's what it's sized for, is for those 99 cent coffins. And like I said, I started. And I've, I've been trying to keep track of sizes and everything in case somebody has. So the bottom piece is 5 inches by 9 inches and you just cut one and it's and I'm recycling my priority boxes again and then these side pieces are five by nine but then on uh, you can have two that are inside pieces and two that are outside pieces that look virtually the same except for the only difference is this bottom part is wider on the outside than it is on the inside but uh, this one is 5 inches by 9 inches and these side side pieces here and the two center ones are half inch and the top is half inch but this bottom one is 11 sixteenths and from here to here is one and a quarter and from here to here I believe was four and a half I didn't write that one down for some reason Make sure. Yeah, four and a half. Gotta write that down. And this is what we're going to call the wall, long side, inside. And you'll cut two of them for each side. And as you see, I've already put mine together with the paper hinge. And the wall sits on top of the floor on the top, not on the side. Right, maybe get my hand out of the way. Can you see that? The wall sits on top of the wall. Uh, on top of the floor. Uh, base. The side wall sits on top of the base. Okay. So there's that so far. And next what we're going to do is we're going to put in 
an extra bottom because um, we want our bottom to be nice and secure. And that one is, let's see, where did I get that one down? Okay, this one is four and seven eighths by eight and three quarters, this piece here. And it just glues right down into the bottom. That's just giving your bottom a little more support. So we'll do that now. I'm just using my Aline's tacky glue for this. that are going to go on the end, they're going to go on top of the wall. So as I hope you can see, there's a little bit of a gap on the ends. That's where the walls will sit on top of the base. Can you see that, I hope? I'm going to make sure they're nice and even. Okay. Excuse my squeaky chair. Here it's and now is whenever we need to put on our wheel assembly not the whole entire wheels and everything but we need to put on our axle piece which is this and I'll explain that in a separate you know section I, I filmed it sec separate whenever I was making this so you'll see how it goes but how to make this but you see it has three holes in the top we need to punch holes in the bottom of our floor here, but we need to decide where we want to put our wheels. So, let me get one of my wheels out. Here's one of my wheels, and let's see, I'm trying to decide where I want it. Kind of like that. wouldn't look too bad. I forgot to grab some brad, so let me do that and then I'll be right back and we can continue. Okay, I'm back with my brads. I have poked my holes into the bottom, the three holes, and I've put my brads through the axle assembly. And now we're going to put, push our brads up into the floor. And the reason you do this now and not later is because you won't have access to this side of your, your floor structure to add the brads. Now you could just add your axle assembly with glue, I guess, but I like the added security of the brads, and it's all going to be painted, so I'm not worried about the color of my brads or anything like that. And I think what I want to do, I've got some plastic washers. Oh, excuse me just a minute, I'm not going to stop the video again. I'll just go over here and get them. I can remember what I did with them. Sorry about my disorganization. Okay. How about these at a, a church rummage sale? 50 cents for this bag of these little plastic washers. Probably can't see them because they're clear. But the lady asked me, what, what are you going to use those for? And I said, I have no idea, but here's a perfect piece for them right here. I'm going to put them on my little brads before I fold the 
Oh. Hands down. Probably not necessary, just something that adds that little extra security. But it's not going to come off or break through the cardboard or whatever. Okay. So that looks pretty good, I think. So now, I, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to put glue on my axle. That was silly, wasn't it? <coughs> Sorry. So, let's take all this back off. Ay. And put some glue on it. I'm just not quite with it yet, I don't guess. At least I caught it before I had the floor in and couldn't get to it again. That's usually my luck. Okay, let's try and get this back in there again without making too big of a mess. Good luck with that, huh? Brads are open slightly now. They're harder to get in. My fault. Silly me. Forgot the glue. Come on. Cooperate a little bit. Okay, there, now we have our axle on. And next what we're going to do is put our braces in into the floor like this. And these are 9 sixteenths by 4 and 7 eighths. And you need to cut 7 of them. Might not need that many, but... Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think... Yeah, let's go ahead and put them in now. I was thinking about putting the ends on first, but yeah, let's do these first. And uh, you'll put one on each end and then space the rest out. I'm not going to bore you with that, so I'll be right back. 